What's up guys? So, I think I am finally over the withdrawals from racing at Daytona last weekend, maybe. Uh, if you haven't seen my Daytona video, go check it out right now. Link right over here. So I'm gonna start with my, you know, weekly update. If you don't really care about my life, then you can go ahead and skip to the meat of this video in the description below. I'll leave the time code there. But if you're still here, thank you. Uh, for taking an interest in my life. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been a pretty chill week. I mean, you know, the last couple months I just kind of felt like it's been like going, 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 going. And it's, it's kind of nice to just kind of have like a weekend off and just kind of relax. I mean, I'd always want to be out there, but you know, sometimes you kind of just need a break. So like, what did I do? One of the things I did was I went over to my friend Chez's place and shot a video for him. <laughs> Chez, who's been in a couple of my other videos, he is a, a horse whisperer. I mean, his business, that's what he does. He's a horse trainer. So if you have horses and you are having issues with one of your horses, go check him out. I mean, uh, Raptor P Horse Training on Facebook. Uh, I think they have a website. Um, I'll link him down below. Another thing that happened this weekend was my wife and I cleaned the garage. <laughs> Actually, my wife pretty much cleaned the garage while I was away at Daytona racing, but we did some more organization and some, a few other small things, including putting up banners like that Michelin banner you see right here. Pretty awesome. I love my wife. She's, she's awesome. Maybe I'll do like a garage tour for a future video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if, do you want to see a garage tour, what I have in my garage and how I use my garage for my bikes? Leave a comment. If you don't know already, um, if you're new to this channel, first of all, Please like and subscribe. Me and my wife are expecting a child soon. Like very, very, very soon. Ah. So, I mean, like one of the things I'm expecting to do is to have to put my racing on hold for a few months. I'm not exactly sure how long exactly, uh, but I'm guessing about three months or so. Now, my wife is awesome and she's like, why do you even need to stop, you know? We, I could handle the kid for a weekend or something like that. She really encourages my passion here. But I mean, let's be real here. I'll probably be too tired to drive hours away to race. And I'd probably be too tired to race well. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna take, you know, take it easy for the next couple months and we'll go from there. We'll see how it goes. But even though I am taking a break from racing, I'm still gonna try to put out videos every week because, you know, that's, I just gotta keep this like, fresh, you know? Uh, if you have any suggestions for topics, uh, any kind of topics that you want to see me cover, uh, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so you watch my videos and you're thinking, hey, that's something that I want to do. And that thing being racing. I mean, if you wanted to make videos, awesome, do it. Because it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. But let's, let's say that, you know, that you saw my, you saw my videos and you were like, I want to take my motorcycle and want to race it. So let's talk about how do you get started with racing. All right, first off, now ideally you're like an avid track rider in the advanced or expert group, but at the very least you should be an intermediate group rider. So you got out of the way. In order to get your race license though, you need to take a race school. Now, I am pretty sure that every race organization out there requires you to take a school of some sort and get a certificate saying that you completed that school. Now there are a ton of race schools out there and there are probably a ton of like track day organizations that claim they are race schools. But if you already have like a race organization in mind, you really want to check with them and see which race schools are approved by them because they won't accept a certificate from a race school that isn't approved by them. Now, where do you find this? You can usually easily find it on their website or you could give them a call and they could let you know like which ones are in your area, which ones are closest to you, uh, which ones are happening when. They will teach you some of the technical aspects of like race weekends and stuff like that, of what's required to go racing. I mean, they're not gonna make you fast. Some of them have coaching, but not all of them do. They will actually evaluate you on the track to make sure that you know, you're know you at least fast enough and consistent enough to go racing. There's like a book and you're gonna have to read, like they're gonna read the book with you and you're gonna, have, you're gonna get tested on it. So uh, pay attention. So after you take your race school and you pass it, they should give you a certificate. Make sure you get a certificate because if you don't, it's like, 
did you even take to school? The race organization is going to need a copy of it in order to approve your license. And speaking of licenses, now you got to apply for one. Go to the race organization's website, go download and fill out a license application. So you download the license application from the website and you filled it out. Now I know with CCS, they require you to send the application via snail mail because they require a, an actual signature, not a copy of a signature. All right, so you've been approved for your race license. That's awesome. Let's go racing, right? Well, not so fast. You gotta get your bike and your gear ready. A bike straight out of the showroom floor is not race ready. There are some things that you're gonna need to do in order to get it so that it could, it'll pass tech and you could race. What are those things? Well, they're gonna differ between each race organization. Make sure you get a copy of the rule book, which is usually available via digital format. You could get it on their websites and just kind of read through and see what the tech requirements are for getting your bike ready. And then also while you're there, just read what your gear requirements are too, because uh, for stuff like your helmet, they require your helmets to meet a certain standard within a certain year. Helmets that are too old are potentially unsafe. Um, you gotta have a full one piece suit. I think for most race organizations, a two piece zip up suit's not gonna cut it. Gauntlet gloves, boots, you, you know, read the rule book and it'll tell you everything you need to have your bike ready. And they will check. They do check every weekend. Even if they know you, they're still gonna check to make sure that your bike meets the tech requirements. And if your bike doesn't meet the requirements, they don't let you ride. Simple as that. These tech requirements may seem like a pain in the ass and sometimes they are, but they're really there to make it safe for everybody, not just yourself. Stuff like, you know, fluid, if it gets out of your bike and onto the track, I mean, that's a dangerous situation that could down a bunch of bikes. You know, get your bike prepared correctly and everyone appreciates it. All right, so you, you got all that and you got the right gear, you got your bike prepped correctly and you know you're gonna pass tech. It's time to race now. And from this point, it's just a matter of actually registering for races and going to them. Again, race organizations websites should have every bit of information that you need to know as far as like how much each race costs, practice, how much practice costs, where the races are, when they're happening. That way you could plan to be there. So find a race weekend that you can make and let's register. Fill out your, you know, pertinent information and then first, which races you're gonna race? Uh, wait, which races do you race? Each race organization has different classifications for which bikes could run in each group uh, or each class. And they're all gonna be kind of different, similar, but different. Uh, in the rule book again, the rule book has every piece of information you need. It will tell you which bikes are legal. Um, and it may not be like, it may not like say like exactly which models and years because that's, there's so many models of bikes out there, but it'll tell you like 600 CC water cooled engine is a middleweight, but you know, figure out which, which classes you could run and then sign up for those races. So sign up for those, the races that you want to race in those classes. And as simple as that. And then after you fill all that out, uh, you can either submit it, uh, submit it however they accept it. Sometimes online, sometimes you have to mail it in, fax it in. Um, or something like that, and you should be pretty much set. You don't actually have to do this before you go to the races. You can show up to the track on the race weekend and fill out the registration form then, um, but there are some advantages to pre-registering. Most of the club racing organizations like CCS, which is the, the organization I race with, they offer an advantage for those who register early or pre-register. You get better pricing as long as you register before the pre-registration deadline. And the sooner you register, usually the better grid spot you're gonna have. And that is really much, pretty much to reward those that have committed to going. So, you know, they know they're gonna have the money from you to pay for the track and whatnot. Think bad of it if you will, but it's actually like a smart business decision to do it this way. There, there are a couple organizations out there that, that run qualifying for certain classes or for all classes, but they're pretty rare. And that should be pretty much it. You're At that point, you're on the track, you're gonna be doing that stuff. There are a lot of things that will make your life at the track a lot easier. And I think I will make a video about that uh, in the future. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave me a like. Hit that thumbs up button right over here. If you're already to this point, might as well hit it there, come on. Again, if you're new, please consider subscribing. Now, if I forgot anything, Please let me know in the comments below. It could be useful for someone else. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.